you have Barrett's esophagus and you're confused whether or not you should monitor it, watch this video to learn the reasons that you may or may not want to continue to monitor Barrett's esophagus. The most concerning complication of Barrett's esophagus is its transformation into cancer through a process called dysplasia, which we discussed in a recent video. While that is concerning, to evaluate the risk of Barrett's esophagus, don't just think of its worst outcome, but the likelihood of its happening. If you were to go skydiving, you know the risk, but if you perceive it to be unlikely and you want the thrill, people choose to go skydiving. The estimated risk of Barrett's esophagus progressing to esophageal cancer in a given year is about one in 200 patients, and that's relatively low. We also think that people with Barrett's esophagus tend to live just as long as people without Barrett's esophagus. That's partly because Barrett's tends to occur in people who are already older in age and they face competing risks. These competing risks include things like heart disease or the development of other cancers. And competing risk illustrates the concept that we may do our best to prevent problems of Barrett's esophagus only to face a heart attack from heart disease. A risk of one in 200 people developing esophageal cancer in a year may seem low, but that risk accumulates over the course of a decade. And if you have high-grade dysplasia, that yearly risk is considerably higher, near 10%. To prevent esophageal cancer, many GI doctors will recommend that a patient with Barrett's esophagus repeats an endoscopy every few years to keep a close watch on the condition. This is similar in concept to performing a colonoscopy so that we can catch and remove polyps long before they become a colon cancer. Why then do some patients with Barrett's esophagus choose not to monitor the condition when an endoscopy is a relatively safe and easy procedure? Well, first, there's some practical considerations, the time and cost involved with endoscopy. But secondly, there's the question of how effective is endoscopy in discovering those early changes? The first changes of dysplasia are microscopic, and so we won't necessarily even see them when we're performing an endoscopy. More advanced changes of nodules we hopefully will capture and we can specifically biopsy those areas of concern. So while we take numerous biopsies every time that we're surveying Barrett's esophagus, most of the tissue goes unsampled, which means that there's a definite risk that we'll miss lesions. And this limits the effectiveness of endoscopy for noting those early changes of esophageal cancer. Many of the risks that guide us to monitor Barrett's esophagus are competing risks for other diseases. If a person smokes, is overweight or older, these are all reasons to consider monitoring Barrett's esophagus, but they're also reasons that the person is more likely to suffer heart disease or other types of cancer. In contrast, a family history of esophageal cancer or an extensive segment of Barrett's esophagus on the initial endoscopy are risk specific to Barrett's esophagus, and they don't carry the same competing risk as some of those other factors. So when would I most strongly suggest a person monitors Barrett's esophagus? If a person has a long segment of Barrett's esophagus and they're otherwise fairly healthy, this is a person I think is gonna get a lot of benefit from its being monitored. If a person has a very short segment of Barrett's and they have a lot of other health problems and are older, they're probably less likely gonna have a benefit from repeated endoscopies. If you have a family history of esophageal cancer, especially in a close relative, then monitoring Barrett's esophagus is advised. The recommended interval to follow Barrett's esophagus is every three to five years after the first endoscopy, so long as that first endoscopy made a good biopsy of the Barrett's esophagus. I think that we can lean on the side of every five years because the annual risk is relatively low. When monitoring Barrett's esophagus is pursued, then ahead of each endoscopy, consideration should be given to the risk and benefits of continuing that monitoring program. Because with age, the risk of complications from diseases other than Barrett's esophagus will increase, as will the risk of the endoscopy itself. And eventually, these risks will outweigh the benefits of continuing to monitor Barrett's esophagus. At the time, it makes sense that monitoring be stopped. If you have Barrett's, I hope you found this information helpful. Subscribe to the channel for future information on treatments of Barrett's esophagus. Thank you and be safe.